Welcome back to TechWise TV. Today we're giving you a network survival guide to compliance. We've already talked about the basics of compliance and PCI as well as how wireless security has to evolve to keep pace with an ever-expanding network. Now it's time to look at the all-important and timely subject of database security and how important it is to be compliant when you're dealing with such valuable information. Uh, joining me in the studio now is Dr. Ron Benetton, CTO of Guardium, a database security company and author of the recent book, Implementing Database Security and Auditing. And of course, Dr. Jimmy Ray Purser. I'm just kidding, you're not really. <laughs> I wish, yeah. Our networking solutions expert. Welcome, gentlemen. The thing is, is that we've had databases for a while. So what's new in this arena? What's, what's new is, is really the need, and it represents itself in two things, on the compliance side and the security side. So on the compliance, you know, we never had so many regulations in place. Mm -hmm. We oh. have SOX, we have PCI, we have GLBA, mm -hmm. we have European DPD. We have, you know, 10 or 20 regulations that really form your compliance landscape. They're all somewhat focused on, on data and specifically the database. Sure. The other side of things, if you look at the recent uh, three years and just the, the, the number of data breaches and the severity of the data breaches, there's definitely something is changing. There's a big difference in, 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 in the um, kind of the profile in terms of the attacks as well as the compliance and the, and, and the need. And we're still relying on methods that were created 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. So That's right. the reason Jimmy Ray has such an easy time breaking into a database is really because the practices have been there for 15 years. They haven't changed all that much. And it's because you know, some of the native uh, logging capabilities and the security capabilities are very hard to use and they're not that practical when you think of a you know we're gonna turn it on for a long period of time on all our databases it's just very impractical yeah absolutely and so that impracticality kind of brings in it's a good segue for how the Guardian solution is different it, it, th there's three primary differences one is it's not intrusive second it's heterogeneous and third it's not just about collecting the data, it's about using the data. I know you've got a demonstration. I'd love to kind of see what you do. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I mean, let, let, let's start with an example and I'll connect to uh, an Oracle database. Um, so I'm using a DBA tool and we're going to select some data from a certain table, an employee table. If you look at what um, the Guardian product is showing you, it's showing you that Scott connected Right, the user Scott connected from uh, SQL Plus. Uh, it did a select star from employee and it got 14 records back. And all this is being done without touching the database. And really that's what the non-intrusiveness is about. If you need to go and turn on things at the database level, you're hitting performance, you get into the whole change management nightmare, you have to wait mm -hmm. for a service window, mm -hmm. you have to test right. this first. So, so, so the key is to be able to trace everything without touching the database or the applications. And, and if you look at uh, how it looks in another database environment, it will look exactly the same, which is the second piece. Second piece being, you know, nobody has a single um, database environment. So now I'm connecting to a SQL Server database. I open their tool. Okay, I do a select star from sysprocesses. Um, and, then, and then what I'll see here is an equivalent. I see, you know, it, this time it's a Windows user who logged in, uh, used Query Analyzer, connected, did select star from sysprocesses, got 12 records back. So from a, from a maintenance perspective, I no longer have to have my Oracle DBAs do one thing, and by the way, they have Oracle 8 and 9 and 10, and they all do different things, right. and I have SQL Server and I have DB2. No, now I have one place where everything goes. It's consistent across the environments. It's heterogeneous. I get one, one set of uh, audit trails, one set of security policies, one set of assessments. I don't have to really deal with this problem of if I have a thousand databases of each type, I'm going to invest a lot of time and money. Seems like it would make this. reporting a, a whole lot easier as well. Yeah, and, 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 and so the other thing is regulators change their mind, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I, have, yeah. I have an internal auditor or an external auditor, and they have their own, you know, every year they'll change their requirements slightly. Sure. Um, or pet peeves, I mean, that type of thing, right? right. Everybody or, reads things differently. Mm -hmm. Right, so 
you know, in the current way of doing things within the database, that's an, a whole new project. You sure. have to, again, test it and everything. All I would have to do here, so, so suppose my auditor says, well, I want to know um, which client IP this is coming from because that, that, that's another something that I, that I want to uh, indicate. I would just go into this uh, data view and say, okay, I want to modify this. Okay, so I go into this tool. Again, it's, it's, it's a tool, by the way, that a DBA doesn't get involved with, which right. is, you know, part of the issue is separation of duties, so I do not need the DBA to start changing things from, a, from an auditing perspective. I can just have the well, information security. That's the best practice, security. too, segregating duties like Absolutely. that so the DBA is not involved with. Absolutely. But, but, but how many networking people do you see out there today that are DBAs? I mean, it's, uh, I just read a report the other day on the Internet that there's only a, approximately 500 coders out there that really understand how to securely write code. And even less than that, of networking people that, that are DBA have a DBA background. I mean, so that's that's a pretty cool ability to actually segregate my duties like that. Yeah, and and, that's actually and, cool. and no auditor today will accept a an implementation where the DBAs are responsible for the audit trail. For, oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. No auditor will accept it. No today. kidding. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I had no idea. Fascinating stuff. That makes sense, though. If you can monitor uh, all access to the database, um, how do you help people secure this data? I mean, because yeah, so you know, so so being able to see what's happening is the first step. But it, you know, nobody wants to sit in front of a of a screen all day and, and look at audit trails. So what so what people do is George first, would. Yeah, that's my big thing. I mean, I love it. I can't get enough. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy Ray. <laughs> so, so, so what people would do would, would be to set up security policies. Okay? They would either be policies which are based on the regulations or best practices or you know, their own audit requirements. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is manage by exceptions. So once, once you have the system that's able to do this, you can set up something called a policy, but it's a data access policy. So for example, I have a policy here. What, what that policy is is really a set of rules. Okay, so each rule says, uh, what do I do in certain conditions? Okay, and just, just like you would see in a firewall, but, mm -hmm. but, but for the database world. So I have a policy here as an example that's a PCI policy that says, if somebody's accessing sensitive data that is not the application, I want to know about it because, you know, DBAs should be managing my data, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't really be getting sensitive data back. So yeah, right. if I am a DBA now logged in and I do uh, select credit card, comma, first name, comma, last name from accounts, okay, and, um, well, actually, it's account, not account. So I now extracted a whole set of credit card numbers. What you see in the system is not only the trace of that, but if I go to kind of a security application, okay, and I look at the violations that occurred, what I would see here is that a violation to a PCI directive occurred, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and that somebody, which is not the application, it's a DBA, did a select, and not only that, I can see exactly which credit card numbers came back and their masks so that I don't become another storage Victim, point for, yeah. for, for oh, sensitive cool. data. So it's not only useful for security, it's even useful for notification. Imagine that you weren't able to tell who's taking which data and you have a, a database with a million customers, right. theoretically you may have to notify a million people that sure. there may have been a breach. But if you know exactly which five records came back, Man, I wouldn't you want seconds on that. People. Yeah, Jimmy Ray, that'd I'm be, just curious to what you think about this. Well, you know, so when, when you're talking about your, your, the, the policy, the PCI policy, the first thing that runs in my mind is, is this a canned policy? What if, what if I want to make my own policies? I mean, do I, do I have to, you know, accept the canned policies, or is there a, a way to custom make my own stuff? Yeah, you, there's, when, when, when you look at the system, there are canned policies and there are canned reports. And it, and it goes down to the fact that people don't necessarily want to work too hard. Oh, yeah. But also, people, you know, the regulations are not always completely clear what you need. Mm -hmm. So what you often want to do is you want to do the same thing that your peers are doing. So if you're an investment bank and all the other investment banks are doing similar things, you'll do the same thing because 
it's kind of a best practice within that industry. So oh. you do have pre-canned um, packages for socks, PCI, DPD, Basel II. But if you don't, if that's not good enough, you can always go and add a rule, remove a rule. You can even go and 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 fine tune it to your environment. So we can put the system in a learn mode that will look at your environment and say, based on what we've seen over the past month. This is the security policy that you have in place. Now, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Do you want to create that into a formal policy? Those are all tools beyond the audit trails. Man, that, that's, that is pretty cool. I mean, you, you mentioned Basel II. It reminds me of a, of a story when I helped a bank with Basel II, and after just 10 minutes there, I want to run out room screaming. You know, so that's kind of cool that, you know, we got something to automate that. Some of these policies yeah. are very difficult to actually just understand, in my opinion. Ron, thank you so much for being here. It has been a pleasure. Fascinating stuff. Jimmy Ray, as always, we appreciate your input. Do you want to keep this? Thanks, I think I'm just going to take this with me. You don't uh, mind, do you, Ron? <laughs>